Dear Heavenly Father, I come boldly to your throne room of grace to obtain mercy. I, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would uh, lead me. And I, I know you're fully, fully capable and able of already knowing what I'm about to say, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord said what you're to say, just say quickly. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for entering in. And the sign was a 5.5 earthquake just hit Ecuador in real time. I have to I have to do a job here. So a lot of things occurred in my life uh, because I gave my life to Jesus Christ in service and made him my Lord and Savior. And some of it became difficult, and I want to start off from where I left off and and say this, and it, it's not going to be popular and stuff, but it's just a job I got to do. I have no personal feelings involved for the people I'm talking about as far as disliking them or anything like that. It's just something... That needs to be say that God could get all the glory. It's as simple as that. Nothing personal. Strictly business. Okay, so let people know we're here. Hit the like, share it, put it on Facebook, YouTube. We're going to talk about something very exciting and end times right now. Okay, the way this... Let, let me explain what happened. I had an... I've had... Two, a couple encounters in my life. One of them was I was shown the number 37 by this angel and said it meant war. And basically a ministry has been based off of the word of God and what that angel said. And it's led up to this exact point we're at now with a war. And what I had said was if it was a physical war, then it would be a spiritual war too. Hmm. Just Holy Spirit strong. So let me continue. So I have this video here, and I have it on Rumble also. Um, how long ago? Was this 16 weeks ago? So four months. So I, I believe it was November, if I remember correctly. And what had happened was I was sitting here minding my own business, and I was led to physically stand up and go to a, a certain area in my home. And, uh, and take off all my clothes and present myself naked to to God and, and ask to be raptured. And uh, I'll save you a half hour of this video. And so what happened is I didn't rapture, I fainted. And I, I had heard... Let the seals be open. Or let me let me play it right here, the last part of it. It ended with me. I'm supposed to call a second person. And I'm supposed to tell them to repeat the same thing I said. Like to bear witness on earth as it is in heaven. And the seals were going to open and then the rapture was going to occur. God was showing me no one can make the rapture occur at any point but him. But him. But God and the things that I've been shown and went through and then since then are astounding some good some bad so let's go to this video from four months ago I have it on rumble I I think I have it queued up right here on YouTube we're at the 27 minute mark let me go to exactly the 27 mark okay and we'll just listen to the last couple of minutes, and then I'm going to pick up from there on something very, very critical. So please wait to hear the follow-up. It's the whole reason I'm making this message right now. It was about to be a rapid. If you missed it, you missed it. I said it was about to be a rap, and if you missed the rapture, you missed the rapture. It was simple as that. You missed it. Let me see if that...
and people weren't ready and the people I knew weren't ready. <laughs> That's powerful. I still oh, cry. Mercy, Lord. I still cry to this day. And I'm grabbing the phone and I'm getting ready to hit this button of this name and I hear Christ and he says, pause. And it still shakes me to the core today. So let's fast forward. So because of the things that happened since then, earthquakes, I want to give you some uh, exact examples. Earthquakes hitting in the exact area I said they would hit. I stood right here on this coast, right here, and I pointed right to where this 5.1 had hit Oregon here. And I said, and earthquakes will begin to hit right there. And there was one greater than, I'm going <laughs> to... You don't want to know how big it was, but it was greater than nine. <clears throat> that was one of the seven Jesus Matter states. So I began to see these all these things happen, and, and then I received these this scripture right here in Jeremiah 23, and I'll read it. Jeremiah 23, it says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. And you can read more. It's a woe unto pastors. Those who are shepherds over a flock. Not just teachers, but those who are shepherds over a flock in specific. And you know if that's your calling or not. So let me show you something here. I want to go to my video manager. Well, praise the Lord. Easy. I want to go to my video manager. And I'm going to put it right in here. The number 23. Now, surely nothing could show up with just putting two numbers in here, right? There's a whole bunch of them. But look at right here. The number 23. So... I knew, I knew when God said, Jeremiah 23, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. I, I instantly had knowledge of this video, 23. This video is about, uh, says, a whirlwind, a solar storm, gates opening, Israel, and the number 23. This video is about what was revealed to me in urgent prayer while laying out prostrate before God for the twelfth day while fasting. Uh, the only reason I'm asking others to join me, the only reason I kept putting that in everyone because I wanted people everywhere around the world to join me and join me they did every day. Every day we played uh, laid out prostrate and prayed. I saw two huge gates opening. One of these gates was in Israel. And like a flood was coming out of it. I saw a storm on the sun. So I, that was a solar flare, I guess. And I was shown Isaiah 19 and John 9. And then I put it destination on Google Map. I don't remember this part or know whether this will work or, or not. But let's try. Just doing what God said to do. Where is this? It's Israel. Oh, man, I'm like starting to shudder. So anyway, there's there's that, right? And then there's this and this and the scripture. And so in real life now, I'm not I'm not in a trance. I'm not in a vision. I, that's the word Apostle Paul used in the in the Bible was he didn't know if he was in the body or out of the body or in a trance like state, but I don't know why this got so hard all of a sudden. And I'm so sorry. I was in kind of like a trance-like state, and then at the end, 
I physically awake, alert, and orientated. I physically walked over to my cell phone that's sitting right here and grabbed it and was looking for a number to call. And I felt like once I made that call and he repeated what I said, it was over with. The church was gone and, and this world was in tribulation. You can say if you want to, if it makes you feel better, that tribulation started and we were all just here and you don't believe in a rapture. Either way, the seals had been opened is the main thing. And there needed to be two to bear wor uh, witness on earth as it was in heaven. And we were like simulating it. But when I heard God say pause, I never called anybody and I've never told anybody who I was to call. I've never told anybody why I went silent for four months. I've, I've held back for the right time. And the Lord, it's 144 right now, 144, 327, 22. The Lord told me, it's 144. The, the Lord told me it's, t it's now time. So let me put some more scripture up here for you and show you this. I can't, okay, help me, Holy Spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, stop whatever's hindering me that would stop me from being your watchman, your messenger on this wall, Lord, in all holiness and pureness and righteousness, would you lead me to the next part, I need you, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Yes, Lord, I will I'll follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life. So prior to all of this happening that I just explained in a four-month period, the Lord had told me that there was two pastors. And these two, uh, these two pastors... I was to get together, and it just seemed so perfect. And I did a lot of praying on this before I said anything to either one of them. That if they, they, they both had spent a lot of time in the army, several years, both of them. They both had been through similar uh, Bible colleges and seminaries. They just seemed to have a lot of common. They both were looking to do a revival all the years uh, prior to 2022. And what God had showed me is that if they would got together, if, they, if these two pastors, instead of making it about themselves and their ministry, if, if they would have been Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, called and sent once, like they were supposed to do, and it's easy to say this, but I'm just led by the Holy Spirit. Then in April, there was going to be a revival. And the Lord Jesus told me that everybody showed up at this revival because most of the time, don't nobody show up. But just those local people that go to that church and that's it. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit led me to actually plant a seed into the mind of one of the pastors on the text plant a seed in the mind of the other pastors on the text, kind of introduce themselves, and then send out a multi-text to both and myself that was saying, if y'all get together in April, God's going to heal everybody that shows up. Jesus Christ will heal them all. And there'll be miracles and signs and wonders in the sky and stuff, man. It was powerful. So I, I you know, I did that. I hooked them both up together and I let it go. Well, it's going to be April here in four days and neither one of them got back to me. Ephesians 4, 11, 13, it says he, he gave some to be pastors and some teachers and let me hold on. we want Ephesians. to get scriptures in here 11 through 13 
And he gave some, this is the, the foundation, this is the foundational scripture. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, and 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts of the Spirit, the calling and the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the foundational scriptures for this ministry for many decades now. So I believe I'm qualified to read it. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we're not tossed around anymore. So pastors are supposed to tend to the flock and care for them and lay down their life for them if they have to. Pastors are supposed to go after, after the, leave the 99 and go after the one. They're supposed to love and care and bring unity in, in edification. And the Lord told me they're scattering, scattering and that they wouldn't get back to me. And that was it. I was the most discouraged minister because I don't refer to myself as a pastor. I was the most discouraged minister I believe you'd find in all California that day when he told me they wouldn't get back to me because it just seemed fake, phony. So let me understand if I get this correct. You just zapped 50 pounds off of my body in three days. And you have me walking and talking in the spirit. And I'm hugging people and they're being healed. The Holy Spirit's all over me. The most powerful event. And then you show me the rapture and the seals being opened and, and to call a witness. And here you're saying that if we get together and do that, everyone that shows up will be healed. And these are healing type ministries. And they didn't even have an interest to even recontact me. Neither neither one recontacted me about this. And now it's going to be April. But I got back. I dusted myself up. I got back up. I disconnected from them. And the Lord gave me a three-day event. Now, you're not going to believe this. The Lord gave me a three-day event. I put this up here uh, a while ago. So it's Good Friday through Resurrection Sunday. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of April 15th, 16th, and 17th. The Lord said, I want you to do a service every day. Do a service. Of, he, listen, he said, do a, this was just, just a couple days ago, a few days ago, I'd say a few. The Holy Spirit, he said, yeah, I, I told you they wouldn't contact you. Do not be discouraged. Just give out the woe to the pastors who scatter. And so I did. That's on my YouTube community wall right now. And I scheduled this event, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to do it, do it all three days. And then I started thinking, wait a minute. I said to myself, just yesterday, I believe it was, I said, hey, wait a minute. Look what just happened, saints. God was testing these two pastors. And they failed. Coming from a channel who's prophesied with 100% accuracy. And loves the Lord and is part of Ephesians 4.11 body. With my own calling. 40 years in this. I'm going to say 40, I think 41 years in this now. Serving Christ. 41 years. But I digress at all that because I said, look what God just did. So we're having to get this. So my wife saw 419 in the sky. It's quite strange because in, she thought it was 29, but it was in 19. So it was the 19th through the 29th of April. God wrote that in the sky in Hebrew in the cloud backwards. Just by Hebrew, I meant it was backwards. And I know that's always meant something profound. And so now here comes April, and I did exactly what I was told. I walked through the fire of discouragement, and I came out not even smelling like smoke. The Lord put his anointing on me to come out here and say that if you show up to this event, this is bold. 
The wicked flee when no one's pursuing them, but the righteous are bold as a lion. We're not the lion. We're as the lion. That's Proverbs. If you if you attend this service, on Sunday we'll have a healing communion. If you are if you if you are given your we'll make sure to we'll give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ, rededicate your life to Christ. Receive Christ first, you know, repent, and then learn of him, and then end it with communion on the final day, on the 17th, end it with communion. Jesus said, now you go tell him, I will heal all who show up and, and, and receive me and believe in me. Receive me and believe in me. I hear the Lord saying, even now, it's like, it's like God prepared this big old table. Hallelujah. Through my broken heart of humbleness, God had prepared this big old table. And he tested us to see if we'd work together. And he said, you know what, just make a smaller table and go set that over here, you know, in the corner. and." And uh, call people from the highways and byways, not these corporate churches that are just putting people down all the time on how they're not perfect enough for real, 100, on how they're telling you you're not perfect enough, you're not, you got to stop this and do this, it's going to turn against you, you you know, God's going to turn against you, you know, you know, I got to be real. So in 19 days, this starts. Just another confirmation says live in 19 days. Attend this. Receive. Believe. And you will be healed. And it's not just a healing in in your body. It's like a preparation to meet him. God showed me a whole bunch of people that thought they were going to meet Christ all sick and stuff and be restored. No, you're going to meet him and already be restored translated so i can only do my part and put this message up everywhere and ask you to share it i won't name the two pastors but uh i was given a scripture about everything being done coming to light and revealed in the last days everything being revealed intentions and motives and I even had written it down in my journal. What what are people's intentions and motives in the ministries? And so I sit here now once again with no ministry that I feel I can trust, got my back. And I'm put on this, uh, this thing here, like God said, and he told me, he said, yes, Paul, it is a smaller table because it's for a certain amount of people, the remnant my remnant. He says, but I got a really, really, really big table. I got a really, 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 really big table in heaven for the feast. And you have mansions to go to recover from the feast because you will be so amazed in my presence, says the Spirit of the Lord. God bless you and amen. Where's my little, there we go. Please don't mention names in the comments or anything like that. Could you just do me a solid on that? It's not about that. This is a real message, very important one.